Welcome back, Awaken Intuitives, and welcome to any new Awaken Intuitives. Natalie here. We are back to do a pick a pile reading. Um, it's going to be three piles, and it's going to be um, what are your dreams trying to tell you? And we will be coming up on that lunar eclipse on October 28th, 2023. So our dreams may be more vivid. The moon is connected to the dreams, the subconscious, the unknown world, the unseen, and feelings and emotions, even intuition. So I want to know, um, what are they trying to tell you? Okay. And maybe you want to know as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull some general energetic messages. Um, actually, first, we're going to do the singing bowl, then the general energetic messages, and then we're going to do the preparation pick a pile so you can choose your pile or piles you feel most drawn to. So I do have some third eye music frequency playing in the background that I do not own the rights to. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share if you are interested in a free personal reading. My email is in the description below. You can also comment on the video. Um, and there are there is a donation link in the description below as well for my readings and my time. But thank you so much for being here. It's always just great to connect and to grow together. That's what it's all about. So um, thank you again. Always have an open mind. Um, always ask questions. Truth is always stranger than fiction. Unconditional love um, and light. <laughs> it feels like I haven't been here in forever. So let's begin with the singing bowl. Um, all timestamps will be in the description below, okay? All right. So, well, we'll just do two minutes. Okay. All right. So this singing bowl has a frequency between the root chakra and the earth star chakra. Okay, so I will count down from three to give you a heads up warning. Ding it three times, sing it, then ding it one last time, okay? So if this is loud, maybe you want to turn it down for a moment. Three, two, one. us to get grounded okay um with this solar eclipse we just had um the new moon with the solar eclipse and then coming up on a lunar eclipse the energies are up down back forth in out it's you, you probably can feel it the energy is all over the place so we wanted to get grounded for this okay all right so let's do our general energetic messages it was almost exactly two minutes okay so all the decks I use will be in the description below, and I'll tell you what they all are. We always ask divine source light creator and guides of love and light only to guide us, no matter what. What general energetic message can we begin with uh, before? Ooh, that was quick. Acceptance. Acceptance means unconditional love. The angels remind you to accept everyone exactly as they are without judging, blaming, or wanting to change them. When you are totally accepting, you bear no malice or enmity towards anyone or anything. Harmlessness through acceptance is a high state of being, and this is a difficult quality for humans to embrace, for it is a divine quality. Nevertheless, the angels are drawing it to your attention now. You are also asked to accept yourself. 
when you do truly do so, you feel centered and confident and your divine self is revealed. Ooh, affirmation. I accept myself and others. Ooh, I love that, especially solar eclipse, lunar eclipse stuff. Um, it's reveal. It's it's the total lunar eclipse sticks out total uh, totality revealing acceptance centered confidence. This is like a mixture of the solar, the lunar, the sun, the moon, the the balance of shadow light. Okay, how cool is that? So there's that one. We'll set that right up here. Okay, next one from the Awakened Dreamer Oracle. The leaves on my trees are so beautiful. They are like gold. They are so pretty. We hardly ever get a long period of time where we can actually see all of the changing colors of the leaves because usually we get a freeze like that and they're just gone. And it's just been so cool to see them all change slowly. So maybe I'll add that on here. I don't know, but it's really pretty. Okay, Divine Source Light Creator, Guides of Love and Light Only. Ooh, okay. I feel, I said that for a reason. The changing leaves, the seasons changing. So we are going through changes, cycles, transformations, like always, right? But this one seems to be different. There seems to be things that are going to be revealed that is going to be new to us. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. What the heck? The divine conspiracy. Are conspiracy theories going to be turning out to be true? That's happened over the years. Everything under heaven is on a mission to awaken you to your greatest, most enlightened potential. Review your life and see how even your challenges provide the perfect storm to take you, shake you, and wake you up to your magnificence. What? What? Okay, I keep hearing my, my bowl ringing. I don't know if you can hear it every now and then. Is it from my voice? Huh? Wow. Oh my gosh! That is a trip! I've never noticed that before. I don't know if you can hear it. No. What the heck? What one is it? I don't think it's this one. No, it is that one. The one we just rung. Are you freaking kidding me? That is a trip. I've never noticed that before. See? Reveal. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're going to be seeing some big reveals. I believe on a personal level and a collective level. All right. No, not really. <laughs> not really with the whistle. Oh boy. Okay. So now let's move on to our last general energetic message from the shaman's dream. Shaman's dream oracle. Okay. <clears throat> Divine Source Light Creator, Guides of Love and Light Only. Huh? Can we get our last general energetic message? Thank you. Number four. Okay. So it's Cancer, Shields, and the energy it is Adolescent. It is Rose Moon. Hmm. So, rose may be significant to some of you. We got a moon. They're not all moon in here. There's plants, um, stones, there's animals, drums. I mean, all sorts of stuff. This is rose moon. Amazing. 
Oh, what is this moon going to be again? Shoot. But I'm going to be coming back to do a reading for the lunar eclipse. Okay. So it is in eight days from today. Today is the 20th, October 20th, 2023. <clears throat> Gosh. All right. So the fourth house in astrology is ruled by cancer. Cancer is a water sign. Okay. The fourth house represents structure, stability, home family, even celebration. Okay. So let's see here. Let's read this out of the guidebook. Short, simple, straight to the point. Okay. I am Rose Moon. I am beauty unfolding. I am the sweet fragrance of life. To enjoy me, you must deal with my thorns. Beware. They, that's on page 11, hurt. Under rose moonlight, your qualities of mothering, nurturing, and giving beauty, beauty are emphasized. Now is a good time to look at your home environment. Examine the thorns and the blossoms. What? Okay. What can you do to improve your space mentally and physically? You may need to mother your own inner child at this time. Tap into your inner strength, your ancient crone, the old aged one in yourself to take care of the teenager who's craving attention. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, I felt we needed to do this thing able to get grounded in Mother Earth Gaia, our mother, um, our home, our stability, our structure. Okay. Maybe um, there's a lot going on with <coughs> how she's mothering us in these times. Um, how we maybe nurture ourselves and our inner child, even our own children, if we have any okay all right we'll keep those in mind so now we are going to move on to the preparation pick a pile we'll just do 12 okay so welcome to the preparation pick a pile this is where you're going to choose your pile or piles you feel most drawn to use your discernment take what resonates leave whatever may not resonate we are going to be using the dreams of gaia tarot this is by raven Fallon. um she is my absolute favorite artist of cards ever. I have a couple of her Oracle and um, I just love this. This is actually the pocket edition. Okay. So um, let's begin. This is going to be a three pile reading. Okay. This is, we're choosing one card so you can, um, so this is setting the stage for each house reading. Okay. It makes it easier to do this instead of pulling all of the cards and stuff um, for each pile. Anyway, we'll do this and then we're gonna pull a double pointed quartz crystal. So we always ask divine source light creator, guides of love and light only. Can we get pile number one, please? Four, what are your dreams trying to tell you? For pile number one, please, I'll flip them all over. Um, show you the cards and take a picture to give you a moment longer as well after this. Can we get pile number one? Okay. Can we get pile number two? Nope. Pile number two. All right, and pile number three. Whoa. Okay, so for pile number one, we have the rose quartz, double pointed rose quartz. Along with the Queen of Swords. So that's for pile number one. For pile number two, we have Aventurine. Along with the Queen of Cups.
And for pile number three, we have the red Jasper. Along with, oh, that was close, <laughs> the Knight. Yep, the Knight of Wands. Almost a queen. That's freaking nuts. Okay, that's for pile three. All right, I will take a picture and give you a moment longer to choose your pile or piles you feel most drawn to. Timestamps are in the description below and I'll see you at your piles reading. All right, welcome pile number one. You chose the double point of rose quartz along with the queen of swords okay this uh this rose quartz goes very well with that rose moon from the shaman's dream oracle doesn't it so the rose quartz is like love unconditional love forgiveness and acceptance okay and um the queen of swords is air energy um it's also related to water because it's a queen so the air energy can be Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. Uh, water could be Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. So in the tarot, the queen would be a number uh, 13. So 13 may be significant to some of you, but also the number four. Remember, the, uh, if you didn't watch the general energetic messages, the shaman's dream, Rose Moon with a four Cancer energy. And it said adolescent, right? As well as shield wow a queen is a warrior okay she welds the truth sword so the uh owl with the white being purity this is a ment mentality of being balanced in harmony and unity very 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 balanced so she gains higher perspectives she rises above situations um relationships and gets um a different point of view she stands for truth justice she may protect protect her feelings and emotions but no matter what she wills the true sword in anything she does okay so i want to read it out of the guidebook so it is called the queen of error in this tarot this is the dreams of gaia tarot okay the queen of error queen of swords says weaver the observer Observant, wise, truthful, analytical, strategic, just. Time to be realistic. Be observant. Plan, organize, and determine your course of action. In need for emotional detachment, be decisive and precise. Choose your words with care. Stick to the facts. Don't allow your intellect to alienate. Okay, that's on page 75. So, is that another 13? 12. So, there's 12. The 12th house is ruled by Pisces, a water sign, and the moon is related to the 12th house, okay? And so 12 can also be reduced to a three. The third house in astrology is ruled by Gemini, air sign. And uh, the third house is communication, uh, transportation, journeys, as well as like uh, teamwork, the mentality, okay? So now we're going to move on, that's setting the stage for your reading, to another tarot. This is the Tarot of the Owls. Uh, I didn't even think about that um, with the owl here. Maybe owls are significant. Maybe your third eye is being open. Maybe you are seeing different perspectives of situations. Um, maybe this uh, lunar eclipse is helping you see different perspectives. The shadow side of yourself, okay? Now, um, my first question for you. Again, we always ask Divine Source Light Creator, Guides of Love and Light Only, what are Pile One's dreams? Trying to tell them. Remember, this is a general reading, not a personal reading. If you're interested in a personal reading, um, my email's in the description below. So what are Pile Number One's dreams? Trying to tell them. What are Pile Number One's dreams? Trying to tell them. And this is your recent dreams, okay? This can be timeless, but take what resonates. I seen that and I thought I thought we were gonna get it. One more, please. <clears throat> what are pile number one's dreams trying to tell them? 
Okay. Wow. Very interesting. First of all, you have a major arcana, the number 20 of the major arcanas. It can be reduced to a two. Second house in astrology is anything on the material plane, anything you can touch tangible, which material, okay? It can just be your earthly reality. And um, judgment is like second chances. It is actually making a big judgment call. It's making a big decision. It is receiving a judgment call. It's like the angels coming down and blowing the trumpets. It is a big uh, event in your life, okay? And um, now you have the Six of Cups. The Six of Cups can be childhood. We got adolescent. You got that four, okay? Fourth house is home, family, structure, stability, celebrations. Six of Cups can be your roots, your childhood, childhood memories, even memories. Um, maybe you have children, but I feel this is your childhood <clears throat> or something since childhood that you're making a decision on, uh, making a judgment call on, almost like a second chance in a way. Hmm. So what your dreams are trying to tell you, <gasps> the trees, there's green bushes and then there's like orangish golden tree leaves. That is so funny. I was just talking about that in, when I was, was it before I was doing the general energetic messages? Maybe that's significant. Hmm. But the orange reminds me of the sacral chakra. The sacral chakra can be connected to maternal side, paternal side, your roots, ancestors, lineage, generational. It seems that you have made a decision and it can be subconscious um, to heal some childhood stuff, to be there for your inner child, to heal possible childhood traumas, to fill your own cup, to be there for yourself, even for your own family. If you have children, if you have family, very interesting. Okay, so here's the judgment card. And then remember, what was it? The storm. What was that about the storm? In the general energetic messages. Shoot, where was that? Hmm. Remember, acceptance. Talked about something being revealed. Well, acceptance means unconditional love. And accepting everyone exactly as they are without judging, blaming, or wanting to change them. Wow. What was it about the storm? Ah, the divine conspiracy. Here we go. Everything under heaven, uh, just like this right here, right? The angels coming down from heaven to blow the trumpets is on a mission to awaken you to your greatest, most enlightened potential. Review your life and see how even your challenges provide the perfect storm to take you, shake you, and wake you up to your magnificence. Okay. <clears throat> wow. So, let's see what else we can do here. There's the Six of Cups. All right. So, why? Why? Why are pile number one's dreams trying to tell them this? Let's find out why. Why? Why are pile number one's dreams trying to tell them this? It really is your subconscious trying to tell you this. The Empress. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? The Empress is the number three of the major arcana. Three can be the third house in Gemini, um, communication, transportation, journey, teamwork. But the Empress is Earth energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. So it is a Venus energy. Venus is love acceptance okay and the empress is motherly energy maternal okay and she is nurturing she is very kind 
she's very caring. She takes care. She is pregnant with plans, ideas, new seeds, and then she gives birth, okay? She gives birth to new life, to a new cycle, to a new, to new ways, but doing it in a loving way, in a very, very, very nurturing way. That's why. Maybe some of you have a motherly figure in spirit. Okay. That's so beautiful. All right. So now I want to do a different tarot deck. <laughs> We're going to use a few this time. I don't really ever do that. But now let's use the Wild Unknown Pocket Tarot. Oh, my singing bowl just wrong. Look what's on the bottom. Look at the bird. Number 20, judgment. Again, 2-2, 2020, 2-2 two, two is a four. Oh, your stability, your structure, home, family, uh, celebration. Are you kidding me? That is so crazy. Pile one. Wow. And the mother of cups. So that's the queen of cups. So you may want to watch pile number two because that was the queen of cups, but that's totally up to you. Okay. All right. So the next question, divine source, light creator, guides of love and light only. So what purpose do these dreams have for pile number one? So what purpose do these dreams have for pile number one? One more. What purpose? Thank you. Wow. Oh my heck. Oh. I am almost getting teary eyed here. You have the Ten of Wands and you have, you have the freaking Empress from a whole other tarot deck. I knew it. I knew I needed to use different tarot decks. Oh my gosh, this is so freaking cool. Okay, the 10. Tens are all about cycles ending for new beginnings. It's always about that, okay? And the 10 can be reduced to a one, which is a new beginning, right? Uh, a new life. 10 of wands is fire energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. The 10 of wands is you carrying burdens for so long. And now it's time to put them down. Um, instead of carrying all the sticks, it's like you're going to plant them and have it grow on their own. Hmm. Very interesting. So Ten of Wands is, you know, putting the burdens down, surrendering. Also, judgment is about surrendering to divine source like creator. You're surrendering all the burdens, anything heavy, anything that weighs you down, puts weight on your back, okay? This is the purpose. So you can empress, nurture, take care, grow, expand, reach your fullest potential, birth an entire new life. Look at the moon. I feel this um, lunar eclipse coming up is going to be very significant for that. Okay. That's the purpose. Simple as that. Wow. Uh, okay. Whew. Now, divine source light creator, guides of love and light only. Look what I just cut to the moon. Confirmation. Okay. How can pile number one interpret their dreams more? Can I get one card? How can pile number one interpret their dreams more? How can pile number one interpret their dreams more, please? Thank you. Ten. Uh, did you see? We did see the moon and then there was a ten of pentacles. I don't know if I can show you. When I cut it, it was the Ten of Pentacles and the Moon. Okay? 
and now you have a ten of cups. So three tens. You may want to look up ten, 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 angel numbers, ten, ten, ten. There can be three major things in your life because the empress is a three. Three major things in your life that is going to change, that is transitioning, that is going to be rebirthed, okay? Um, Ten of Cups is happiness. It is abundance. It is joy, comfortability. It is a fulfillment. It is colorful. It's very uh, a very strong foundation. It is secure. It is happiness and joy. Okay. So, how can you interpret your dreams more? Connect the dots. Whatever you're dreaming about, specific things in your dream, whether you walk into a new home, that's your stability structure, right? Um, so whatever is in your dream, if it's a book, what does that make you feel? Instantly, that's what the meaning is. That's what I get. Okay, cool. All right, so let's do an oracle now. And we're going to do the Spirit Allies Oracle. Okay. So, Divine Source, Light Creator, Guides of Love and Light Only. So, what should pile number one be aware of about their dreams? From the Spirit Allies Oracle. What should pile number one be aware of about their dreams that they're having? Rainbow Fluorite. What is this here? What are the colors? Rainbow. Love it. So it's a card number 21. Oh my gosh. Look what's on the bottom. Peyote 33. So now you have 333. Three, three. Okay. You may want to look up angel numbers 333. Three, three. So remember three, the third house is ruled by Gemini. It can be communication, transportation, journeys, and technology, but it's also cooperation and teamwork. Okay. <sighs> 21 it can also be the major arcana, the world card. And that is a travel. It is a journey. It's a cycle and a completion as well. It's a circle of life. All right. 21. Rainbow fluorite. So what you should be aware of about your dreams that you're having, okay? Meditation is an important part of my spiritual journey. Blends of green, purple, and deep blue make this crystal stand out amongst the rest. When held up to the sunlight, the individual colors stick out even more. And with each turn of the hand, a new pattern can be found. Rainbow Florid is a potent stone that can help to cleanse the aura and clear out negative energy. That's Ten of Wands. That's clearing out. Okay. Rainbow Florid encourages you to meditate in the coming days, makes, making space for the clarity. Like the Queen of Swords. Clarity. Seeing things clearly. Okay. Um, making space for the clarity of the patterns in your life to emerge, to be birthed. Ooh, even three minutes in the morning can make all the difference because you go about your day or before you go about your day, sorry. Give your mind and body the rest it needs and connect with your breath. Let it fill you and rejuvenate you. The breath is our life force prana, and it carries you throughout life. Taking just a few moments of your time to rest, the outer eyes can bring you to a peaceful state and realign your energy. Hold flora in your hand or keep it in your space to amplify your cleansing practices. Journal prompt says, what is the best way for me to incorporate meditation into my practice? Okay, and that's on page 36. So 36 can be added up to a nine. Um, 369, you may want to look that up. Very, very powerful numbers to manifest with. Anyway, um, the ninth house is ruled by Sagittarius. And the ninth house represents faith, spirituality, higher learning, higher perspectives, higher education, spiritual journey. Okay. So beautiful. All right. What you should be aware of about your dreams. You may want to med meditate on them. Okay. All right. So now we have more tarot and we are switching it up again. <laughs> I love changing things. <laughs> okay. We are going to use Tarot of the Divine now. All right. So 
these are just simple questions, okay? Is pile number one having dreams mainly on a personal level about their personal life? Okay, so it, I wanted to know if you are having these dreams more mainly about your personal life, we have the Six of Swords. Swords is air energy, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra energy. So the Six of Swords, it's, it's actual help. So the Six of Swords is moving around obstacles, moving out of challenges, crazy troubled waters, storms, right? And moving to a more calmer ground. It's a type of travel, but it's with help, okay? So now my next question is, are you having some of these dreams? connected to the collective and humanity are they connected to the collective and humanity 10 of wands now you have four tens so 10 10 10 all right um i think it's mainly on a personal level but you have some help and guidance some protectors here helping you do this okay i believe they're mainly for you on a personal level so tens can be a no for me ten of wands is that burdens putting the burdens down to get a new start a new beginning look at this tree growing through the skull the dead wow that is pretty wild isn't it okay that's all i wanted to know so now let's move on to another oracle so the other oracle we have is the white light oracle, okay? This one's by Elena Fairchild. So divine source light creator, guides of love and light only. What is the significance of pile one's dreams? What is more significance on pile number one's dreams that they've been having? Card number eight. Well, the eighth house in astrology is ruled by Scorpio, a water sign. Um, the eighth house represents death, rebirth. It's like that. Um, changes, transformations, endings and new beginnings, regeneration, sex, money. Eight is also the infinity symbol, right? So it's ever flowing in that eight, uh, the infinity symbol. Um, but it's bath coal. So let's see what that is exactly. What is more of the significance of your dreams that you've been having? Oh, bath coal. Here we go. Eschew co complicated explore. Okay, wait. Eschew complicated explanations. Okay. As you seek the simplicity of the deepest truth of your heart. You got that uh, rose quartz, the love, unconditional love. It's like the heart, right? And then the queen of swords, truth and clarity. Okay. Gently but firmly cast aside that which does not resonate as being true for your heart. Focus upon and seek from a higher spiritual perspective. All prayers are answered at the perfect time and in the perfect way. You have a powerful voice which can foster healing and wisdom on our planet. Bath Cole is a mysterious creature. She's an angel known as the Divine Oracle, the daughter of the Divine Voice, the pure and true sound of spirit. When she whispers to your heart, you feel it as an inner knowing, a truth. To honor that inner knowing likely requires the confrontation of fear or moving in unexpected directions. Even so, the deep resonance of her truth is more powerful than the re resistance we may initially feel as we let go of our limited perspectives and allow ourselves to be guided by spirit. The spiritual voice of Bath Cole is always true, always healing, and always in harmony with the higher loving plan of the universal heart, which is working toward the spiritual fulfillment of all hearts. Wow. Hers is the healing sound, the voice of divine prophecy, which not only tells what shall be, but through speaking of the highest potential, creates a blessing which manifests the ultimate goodness within us. That reminded me of the singing bowl when I was like making loud noises and it was dinging and I could hear it. When bath call appears in a reading, an inner spiritual call, like a judgment call, right? May require a leap of faith, okay? A more authentic awakening is coming to life. Paving the way for the higher self to manifest typically means that fear and control based approaches need to be surrendered. Wow. Both or sorry, bath calls presence indicates something more appropriate and vital needs to supersede the limiting structures currently in place. 
As a consequence, she is a portent of spiritual transformation and material manifestation. Honoring her guidance requires courage, but brings rich reward on many levels. The Oracle of Avcola indicates a voice that is true and needs to be acknowledged. This may be a voice in your own heart, which needs to be heard without judgment or censorship. It may be an intuitive inner knowing to be recognized. It may be a loving and helpful voice of a reliable guide or friend whom you know can be trusted. This, that's what that reminds me of. It could be Bath Cole. It could be your higher self. It could be you being there for your inner child. Okay. Whatever you resonate with. It may be a teaching from a dream. Ah! <laughs> or an insight from a meditation. Oh my gosh. Or even an inkling that certain happenings or sightings are signs from the universe to help you on your life path. Bath Cole is the clear voice of communication between humanity and higher beings. When, a call, when called upon, she will assist a human to accurately interpret a sign or omen. What? Or your dreams? Okay. Her voice brings clarity. Therefore, this oracle indicates a time of confusion is swiftly coming to an end. Ah, yes. The oracle also encourages you to practice your power of discernment. Build your ego from heart. If a point of view lowers your vibration, makes you feel negatively about yourself or another increases your confusion or makes matters seem more complicated it is likely to be an ego-driven viewpoint to consider what you might be able to learn from that viewpoint you need to settle yourself on more authentic spiritual ground structure stability that just explained all of the messages we've been getting throughout your whole reading already that is so cool okay so that's even more significance and it makes so much more sense. It's more confirmation. All right. So there's that. Okay. And now we've got another Oracle. We are going to be using the gateway of light activation Oracle by Kyle Gray. So now, Divine Source Light Creator, Guides of Love and Light Only, what is the most important message our pile number one can receive regarding their dreams that they've been having? What is the most important message that pile number one can receive regarding their dreams that they've been having? Is there important, an important message? Thank you. Oh. Memories of Atlantis. Remember, you got the Six of Cups, and then you have the Six of Swords. Really interesting. It says spiritual acceler uh, acceleration and progress and technology. There's an Anka key to life. So you may have some dreams um, that you're dreaming of like maybe the ocean, maybe um, type of different world, beach, uh, fancy, amazing buildings. Um, they may just be memories of Atlantis of a past life. Okay. Oh my gosh. The most important message that you can receive regarding your dreams you've been having, okay? Spiritual exploration, progress technology. Technology can be the three, the third house too. Legend has it that Atlantis was an advanced civilization that existed thousands of years ago in the center of the Atlantic Ocean. Its people were highly evolved and had many spiritual gifts. They were telepathic, extremely psychic, and known for their ability to combine the laws of science and spirituality to develop technology and create heaven on earth. But somewhere along the way, many of them stopped respecting their gifts and spiritual connection. Their disrespect for the earth, Empress can represent Mother Earth, Gaia as well, Divine Feminine. Anyway, for the earth, an ocean caused a great cataclysm that brought their civilization to an end. The Atlanteans who had continued to live with spiritual integrity had an awareness of what was to come and were able to achieve full ascension and move beyond the physical realm to that of light. 
They are now a congregation of evolved souls who, like angels and masters, work with those upon planet Earth who are following the ascension path in alignment with devotion and love. If this card comes up for you and has a strong energy or seems familiar, it's a good chance that you are a former Atlantean who didn't honor your spiritual connection then and are being given an opportunity to avoid making the same mistakes now. How to connect. Visualize yourself cloaked in a beautiful deep blue energy. Atlantic Ocean Blue. That reminds me of that Rainbow Florida a little bit. And say, if you would like to, <clears throat> Atlantean Council of light. Thank you for supporting the evolution of my soul so that I can surmount the karmic imbalances of my previous incarnations. Your message you are being transported through a gateway to connect with ancient Atlantis. Know that by drawing this card today, you are receiving blessings from the Atlantean Council of Light who are dedicated to the evolution of the soul. You're becoming aware of your gifts and this is an exciting time, but also a time when the energies of your ego can become loud and obnoxious. Know that this gateway is appearing to remind you to stay aligned with the highest good and rooted in the energies of devotion then there can be a great coming together of the human and spiritual and can live in a more evolved way. That ends on page 108, which 108 is going to be a nine. Can you see that? The ninth house, Sagittarius roll. The ninth house is spirituality. It's faith, higher learning, higher understandings, higher education, higher perspectives amazing all right so that is it now we're gonna pull your last message okay so that's the most important message you can take with you regarding your dreams that you've been having pal one so now we're gonna use the shaman's dream oracle we're gonna pull two there's no guidebook so we're just looking for more confirmation to end your reading so divine source light creator guides of love and light only what two last um, messages can be significant? Uh, con confirmation, anything else, pile number one can take with them. One. Okay. I heard three. I heard pull three. Okay, can I get two more? Can I get two more? One more. One more. That was close. Is there one more or no? Okay. What? Two more times. Hmm. Okay. All right. Whoa. This is funny. We have a card number seven and a card number four. You can minus that and get a three. You can also add them up and get a number 11 and then another two. So three, communication, transportation, journeys, technology, T-Mart. Uh, number 11 is balance of yin yang uh, as above, so below. It is a mirror. It is black, white, um, shadow, light clarity and justice as well like the scales a two would be your earthly world this lifetime here material tangible okay so card number seven the seventh house is ruled by libra the scales it can be relationships partnerships union harmony uh four you've gotten that before the fourth house is ruled by cancer and um the fourth house is home family structure stability so you have that is interesting. The two cards actually start with a C. That's the third letter in the alphabet. I don't know what, what's the significance of C. Will you let me know if anything comes to mind? So the first one is card number seven, covenant, sacred contract. Oh, what? You have this 
sacred covenant contract with a team of your guides and maybe even others on your in your world okay um now you have cat or pillar and it says opportunity so cat maybe cats are significant in some way they're very intuitive they see beyond this material 3d world they're very intuitive right they're they have abilities they're psychic caterpillars it's all about changes and transformation it is about a metamorphosis okay wow well <laughs> you'll have to let me know what you think okay pile one this was so beautiful i am so impressed with your reading Thank you so much for being here. I really just enjoy learning with you guys. So it means a lot. That's really why I'm here, okay? And just always take what resonates. Leave whatever may not resonate. Use your discernment. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And like I said, if you're interested in a free personal reading, my email's in the description below. You can also comment. And for donations for my readings, there's a link to PayPal in the description below. And I will see you guys in the next reading or video. All right, Pile One, thank you again. And I'll see you in the next reading or video. Bye. Welcome, Pile Number Two. You chose the Green Aventurine Double Pointed Crystal as well as the queen of cups oh my gosh this is perfect oh my gosh this goes so well with this card so the green of entering green reminds me of the heart chakra this is love purity authenticity feelings emotions but it's mainly love the heart okay and this is what the Queen of Cups embodies, is the heart, okay? The Queen of Cups is Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, Energy, Water. That may be in your chart somewhere, uh, very significantly. So it is a number 13. Pile 1 got a Queen as well. You may have watched that. You may have came from Pile 1. You may want to go watch Pile 1. It's up to you. Anyway, so 13 may be significant, but it's also a 4, right? The 4th house is ruled by Cancer. And it is home, family, structure, stability, solid foundation, celebration, good stability, okay? So the Queen of Cups is empathy. She embodies empath abilities, channeling. She also is a seer. She sees things from uh, her empath type abilities and what she channels. She's very, very intuitive, okay? So this is setting the stage for your reading. Oh, pearls maybe significant in some way for some of you maybe even sea turtles or crabs okay all right so let's read it out of the guidebook this is the dreams of gaia tarot so it is called the queen of water in this tarot this is the pocket edition but um it says loving compassionate empathetic sensitive vulnerable romantic intuitive emotional honesty trust in your feelings and senses look beyond the surface a bright and positive outcome to show vulnerability is to show strength are you overextending emotionally be the embodiment of love withdrawing love as punishment you use your common sense and that is on page 105 so um one and a five would be a six the sixth house in astrology is ruled by virgo um the sixth house represents the body uh health wellness uh daily routines like work your daily work um also boundaries and organization so let's keep that in mind during your reading so we are going to use the sacred web tarot and um some other tarot decks and some oracle so we always ask divine source like creator guides of love and light only the first question i have for pile number two what are pile two's dreams trying to tell them what are their most recent dreams trying to tell them remember this is timeless um but take what resonates 
Okay. What are Pile 2's dreams trying to tell them? One. Can we get one more? Thank you. Well, I have to tell you. What? Okay, on the bottom. Oh my gosh. What? Okay, on the bottom is the card number two. This is the High Priestess. The High Priestess is water, uh, Cancer Pisces Scorpio. She's got abilities. She is very, very connected to her abilities and her senses. She's psychic, empathetic. Um, she understands things from the esoteric world, realm. Uh, very knowledgeable in that way. Okay, so there's that. I just wanted to show you that. Okay, now you have a nine of cups, a nine of pentacles, and on the bottom is the nine of, no, this is a major arcana, I think. This is a newer deck, so I just want to double check, okay? Yep, it is, I think so. I went right to the nine of pentacles. What in the heck? Okay, what are your dreams trying to tell you? Nines, the ninth house in astrology is ruled by Sagittarius. The ninth house in astrology represents spirituality, faith, um, trust, higher learning, higher education, higher realms, higher perspectives, right? And it's almost at that 10, the completion stage, okay? The wishes uh, coming true, the accomplishments, right? Very close. So, um, yeah, look, nine of pentacles went right to that. So let me just double check here. Yep. It sure is a major arcana. I'll take it. Fine. I'll take it. <laughs> All right, pile two. What the heck? Nine, nine, nine. Actually, going straight to that page of the nine of pentacles, that to me is four nines. So you may want to look up angel number nine, 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 nine. Okay, maybe even 999, maybe both, okay? So, first of all, let's cover the Nine of Cups. The Nine of Cups is an overindulgence and in, in, a, in a comfortability because you know and you recognize how far you've come, all the hard work you've done, and you're able to finally rest because you're, you know your dreams are just about to come true. You've done the work. Your wishes are already heard of the universe, and they're just about to come in, okay? And that's Cancer Price Scorpio energy. And then now you have the Nine of Pentacles. Pentacles is earthy. It's Taurus Virgo Capricorn. Um, it is your material plane. It can be finances. But the Nine of Pentacles is an independency. It is comfortability. It is knowing you are just about to pick that fruit that you've worked your arse off really nurturing that plant, that seed to get that harvest, right? It is things coming to fruition and you know it, you know it. Okay. This is independence, individuality. And, um, now you have a major arcana number nine, and this is the hermit. This is Virgo energy. So you may have Virgo in your chart very strongly as well, but this is old soul. This is inner wisdom, inner light, inner light coming out to light the path ahead for yourself. This is also meditation. It's kind of like hermiting, pulling back, but you are lighting your path ahead. And so I do want to read the hermit. So what are your dreams trying to tell you? You are like right there, right there. This is so awesome. And Cups is feelings, emotions, love, comfort, okay? And then, that's your inner world. Now you have the pentacles. That's the outer world. Physicality, material, even financial. Could just be a stability and structure. Your 3D reality. So, let's read it. It's called the insight in this tarot. Dive into the healing water. Be with your golden light. Sink into it, soak it up. The radiance of your soul is always shining brightly, even during the shadowed night, that lunar eclipse. Coming up. Let it light the path for you. 
to gather insight into the hidden mysteries that you entreat. Make of yourself an open channel, an invitation for communion with spirit. Savor this solitary time as you as you dive divine, as you divine the source of any concerns. Okay, and contemplate how to create a world in which you are fully aligned with and connected to your own inner wisdom. Know that any obstacles can be removed when you immerse yourself in the concept of refinement. Allow whatever thoughts that come to you to flow in and out of the mind without grasping or holding. Trust in the process of turning inwards, of reflection, of insight for the treasure that you seek dwells within. It's invitation, earth, the north, Virgo, the north. Um, that reminds me of true north, your true path, your true purpose, life mission, life purpose. Mm, awesome. Opal, intense side stretch or devotional warrior, root chakra. Blam. Well, pile three got the, the red jasper. That is connected to the root chakra. You may feel called to watch that pile. It's up to you. Elephant, lotus. You had that high priestess in there. There was a lotus on there, right? There's also like a lotus right there as well. You're blooming. This is, everything is blooming. Everything's almost fully bloomed. Wow. Um, tree, water, and starlight. It says, I make of myself an open channel, an invitation for communion with spirit. <clears throat> All right. How amazing. This is big deal. Okay. So now, um, my next question for you, pile two, is why? Why, um, why is this coming through pile number two's dreams? Why is this coming through pile number two's dreams? Oh my gosh. A major arcana. High Priestess is on the bottom again. I have to take it. That's the second time. Maybe you're seeing a lot of twos um, and nines. So nine and two adds up to number 11, by the way. 11 is justice, clarity, balance. Yin yang, okay? Yin yang. So you have the Hierophant now. It's a card number five, major arcana. Five is all about changes all about transformations. It's like a lotus. Um, this is infinity. It is as above, so below. That's connecting your spiritual world to your physical world. What were we talking about? Your inner and outer world. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> anyway, so there's an owl and there's a peacock. Hmm, maybe animals are significant, birds are significant or something. Uh, anyway, so the Hierophant is also like a spiritual leader, teacher, um, spiritually guided. Um, it can be religious as well. Um, also commitments and contracts. Okay. Um, it's Taurus energy. Taurus rules the second house, number two of your material world. This is wild. So what I'm getting is you've done the work in the physical and it's coming in or done the work in yeah, the spiritual, sorry. And it's coming into the physical. Okay. Um, and then now you have the high priestess again. The high priestess, she knows, she, she already knows information. She already knows the answers. She already knows the path for herself. Um, she usually keeps to herself, but she holds knowledge, secrets, information and the keys to unlock everything and that's how the higher font is as well that's cancer price scorpio for the uh, high priestess so what a trip seriously we had the nine of cups inner world the nine of pentacles outer world now you have taurus which is the outer world and then high priestess is the inner world that's amazing this is why Hmm. Dream work. I just heard you're doing dream work. Work in your dreams. Okay. So we are going to move on to a different tarot deck now. I thought I needed to switch it up. Um, do things differently like I usually do. So we have the neon moon tarot here. Okay. 
So divine source, light creator, guides of love and light only. What purpose do these dreams have for pile number two? What purpose do these dreams have for pile number two? Fill in the floor. Okay. Seven of swords. One more, please. One more. Okay. Oh, man, this is different. Um... That one is, I don't know if it says, dang it, I don't use this much. Let me double check. That's cups. Shoot. I'm sorry. Um, swords and what would that be? Cups. Oh, I'm trying to interpret here. Um, Zent. What? Wires and Zent. We have the cans or vials for cups. We have the swords for arms. Now we have Zent and Wires. So I think the Wands are Zent and the Wires are Pentacles. I'm pretty dang sure. Okay, so this would be six Wires. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh, Shoot. Um, wands, pentacles. Nope. The zent is pentacles. The wires are wands. Okay. My gosh, that's so crazy. Okay, so the pentacles. So you have a seven of swords and an eight of pentacles. Yeah. So the seven of swords is strategic, careful, slow, patient movement. It is moving in a strategic way, making strategic decision, decisions and choices. And the eight of pentacles is working. It's a job. It's a career. It's whatever you're trying to master and whatever you're trying to create, whatever you're trying to accomplish. Okay, whatever type of work, creating creativity that you're doing, um, you've been doing it in a strategic way, in a careful way, making sure you're doing it the right way. So um, the purpose of these dreams is for you needing to accomplish finding your life mission, your life purpose, your true north your path in life, manifesting uh, any abundance, wishes, goals, dreams. You've had to do it in a strategic, careful, patient way, but you've been working very hard on that. What a trip. That was so interesting. Seven of swords there and the eight of pentacles which is a zent. All right. So move these and let's move on. Okay. We're going to do another tarot deck. Okay. I don't feel called to use that again. So we're going to move on to the other tarot deck that I picked out for you. And it is the mystical dream tarot. Okay. Now, Divine source, like creator, guides of love and light only. How can pile number two interpret their dreams more? Uh, I just seen the moon. Okay. How can pile number two 
interpret their dreams more. Okay, we have the tower. <laughs> well, the tower is fire energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. The tower is the number 16 of the major arcanas, another major arcana. You just seen the moon, that was a major arcana. So major, major things, events, consequences in life. And it's not saying it's negative, okay? So 16 may be significant, but it's reduced to a seven, added to a seven. Seventh house is Libra energy. And it is the scales. It is relationships, partnerships, working together, um, clarity, okay? The tower is a crumbling of a faulty foundation. And it is to build a better one, okay? It is to build with a strong, a stronger foundation and build up. The nines, that's crazy. This is also changes, transformation, like uh, kind of like an upheaval, pulling the rug out from underneath your feet, but it's for you to build better, stronger foundation in life, okay? So it could be changing your perspective, um, creating a better foundation and structure and how you do interpret your dream, your dreams. Okay, so we're going to move on to an oracle now. And we have the Untamed Elemental Oracle first. So Divine Source Light Creator, Guides of Love and Light Only. So what should pile number two be aware of about these dreams that they've been having? What should they be aware of about these dreams that they've been having? Manta Ray. Maybe manta rays are significant. Maybe rays are significant. Hmm. Okay, let's find manta ray. Okay. It says calibration. Wow. What you should be aware of about your dreams that you've been having. It says the grand manta ray soars through the water and even catapults himself into the air with fierce strength his ability to gracefully maneuver comes from a deft internal temperature regulator whoa and exceptional navigational navigation skills hmm. moving with innate knowledge manta ray is perfectly calibrated for his environment manta ray sightings beacon you to break free from the obstacles that hold you back and reconfigure them for your greater good Manta Ray illustrates the importance of calibrating your life force so that you can experience more ease, grace, and freedom through the depths and surfaces of life. Shake off any energy that has accumulated on or around you. Make certain you are surrounded by positive, loving, encouraging relationships that reflect back your magnificence. We just had the exception and um, the Divine Conspiracy says, this was in the general energetic messages, everything under heaven is on a mission to awaken you to your greatest, most enlightened potential. Review your life and see how even your challenges provide the perfect storm to take you, which the tower can be like a storm, lightning striking, upheaval, right? Um, shake you and wake you up to your magnificence. It's all for the better. Okay. And nines are about reflecting on, you know, the, the actions that you've made to get there. Okay. Now let's keep going. Release anything that is draining your energy. Um, practice unconditional self respect. Okay, these efforts will allow you to align with the natural flow and rhythm of life so that your time and energy are efficiently spent and you are more available for play and fun. Playful, energized, in touch with your body's innate wisdom. Find joy in simplicity and freedom in the complicated. And this is on page 41. 41 is a five. Five is changes, transformations, and it can be challenges. Okay, because when we are going through changes and transformations and cycles, things may get a little bit challenging, right? So that's what you need to be aware of about your dreams. So we're going to do tarot again. Um, 
these are just added questions that I wanted to know. The first one is, are, is pile number two having these dreams mainly on a personal level for their personal life? Okay. And then are they having these dreams on a more collective level? Wow. I think it's both for you. Um, first of all, for the personal level, personal life, we have the Three of Cups. Three of Cups is usually three energies. It is a teamwork, a cooperation. I feel this is the collective humanity. And then the Four of Wands is a home and a family. It is connection, celebration, stability, and structure. So I feel it is both. That image is pretty cool. Like a sun and a moon. That solar eclipse, the lunar eclipse. All right. Then we have the four of wands. And then the three and four is a seven. Seventh house ruled by Libra. Maybe Libra's in your chart, but the Libra is the scales. It's about relationships, partnerships, unions. It is working together. Okay. Awesome. So now let's move on to another oracle. This is the Lightworker Oracle. So Divine Source Light Creator, Guides of Lonely Only, what is the significance of pile number two's dreams? What is a bigger significance? What significance can we receive regarding pile two's dreams? Ooh. You have a card number four. And you know what? I was going to show you. Look what was on the bottom of this. It's the Dream Protector. This is the Emperor card. It's a Major Arcana card number four. Fourth house is home, family structure, stability, solid foundation. The Emperor is a boss, a leader, in control. Um, divine masculine, a male influence, fatherly, um, a leader. Okay. Now you have a number four, paradigm shift. There's a new door opening. Oh, I can't show you the whole card, but I'll show you most of it. <laughs> this is amazing. New doors are opening. Paradigm shift. And it's not just on a personal level. It is a collective level as well. Oh, I might have to do this. Look at this. And then we got that emperor, divine masculine. Male influence can be divine masculine. Look at that image. Holy cow. It says you are undergoing radical growth in your belief systems. Now is the time to challenge old attitudes and question previous expectations. You are in an extraordinary time. Great leaps forward can be made in a moment. The world you thought you knew can suddenly break open like the tower. Okay. Um, and a new world can become your reality. Buddhists sometimes speak of the beginner's mind, that which assumes nothing and therefore is open to everything. A spiritual psychologist might call this the inner child, as it is innocent, curious, unfixed, and always learning. It doesn't get stuck on an answer having to be one way. There's openness to the unknown with curiosity instead. Old souls can sometimes find it hard to recapture their not knowingness. Asking someone with a lot of life experience who may have become a bit world wary to drop expectations and look at the world through fresh eyes can be challenging. Yet life becomes much more energizing and interesting when you're open and don't, don't hold expectations about what will be. Suddenly you ha are receptive to the universe helping you in ways that in the past you did not believe is was possible. All because you kept an open mind. Or all, okay, hold on. Suddenly you are receptive to the universe helping you in ways that in the past you did not believe possible. All because you kept an open mind. If you are feeling that you don't really know yourself, your relationships, or your place in the world as you once did. If you are feeling that what you once held to the, be certain now seems to be a little shaky. Wow. Things are These are signs that you're going through a paradigm shift. This will bring you new perceptions that will set you, that sorry, that will free you to be in the world in new ways. You will find yourself shedding old limits fears and misconceptions you're stepping beyond what you have known you are a bit like a traveler in a new city 
feeling awkward until she gets the lay of the land and how things operate in that new place. As you trust the unexpected and unknown, the universe will be able to help you in unexpected and previously unknown ways. If you find yourself questioning the views in mass media or spoken in the conversations that those around you are having, take heart and know that you are awakening from a fear-based world into a love-filled reality. You got that adventuring. You chose the adventuring. Okay. Your confusion will soon transform into joy at discovering that you are free and have no reason to be afraid. You are encouraged by the universe to embrace the power you have to be a free thinker, accept the accelerated mental shift happening for you, even if it creates temporary uncertainty or discomfort. Dare to think thoughts of love rather than lower your vibration by choosing thoughts of fear. Trust for something helpful and empowering is happening in your soul. That's crazy. Beautiful. Okay. It just explained all the other messages you've gotten. Amazing. All right. So we're going to move on to another oracle. Okay. And this one is the star seed oracle. Okay. All right. Divine source light creator guides of love and light only. What is the most important message that pile number two can receive regarding their dreams that they've been having? What is the most important message pile number two can receive regarding their dreams that they've been having? Fall into my arms. That reminds me of uh, judgment. Um, surrendering to divine source like creator, divine masculine, um, divine. Okay. Um, it says surrender. Holding the opposites. That's interesting. The scales. And then extremes of life can be challenging. One extreme to the other fall into my arms. Oh, right here. Hold on. I was going to tell you. So when I started reading this from the Lightworker Oracle, um, it was on page 33. It started on page 33. So you may be seeing a lot of doubled numbers. We've been getting a lot of doubled numbers this whole time throughout your reading. Now this is that's 33, and now this one starts on page 66. That's crazy. Okay. Yeah. All right. Most important message you can receive regarding your dreams that you've been having. Surrender, holding the opposites, extremes of life. The great mother ushered you in when you took your first breath, and she'll be there when you draw your last. She knows how challenging life can be. That being human can be lonely and confusing. That the polarity and separation can be excruciating when your soul remembers the oneness of source. But at the same time, it can be incredibly glorious and sweet. So often we see things as either good or bad. When things go well, we make it mean that, th that we're being rewarded. And when things go bad, then perhaps we've done something wrong. However, we're all here to expand and grow. And it's through the extremes of life that we do exactly that. You're being invited to welcome the highs and the lows of the human experience. To let them initiate you more fully into life. The agony and the ecstasy, the beauty and the bitterness. The, this life is but a single breath in the inextinguishable existence of your experience as a soul. The Great Mother wants you to hand over your loneliness, worries, hurt, sorrow, fears, burdens, and doubts to lay them on her altar, to fall fully into her arms, to remember that while these extremes are difficult, they can also be magnificent. The more wildly the pendulum of your life swings, the more truthfully you can say, I've truly lived. Starseed Activation says, place a card on the portal of your heart and whisper the following. You can put your hand on your heart, look at the image, and listen if you'd like to, okay? Here we go. <clears throat> I'm ready to embrace the extremes of my life. I lay all that I'm carrying onto the great mother's altar and fall completely into her arms. You have the divine masculine. Now you have the great mother. Yin Yang. You have great support. So cool. Okay. All right. So now we are going to pull your last messages. 
and we are going to be using the um shaman shaman's dream oracle okay all right divine source light creator guides of love and light only can we get the last two messages for our pile number two simple straight to the point any other confirmation any other synchronicities thank you this one first and this one okay <laughs> you have a card number one and you have a card number 51 so you have a one and you have a six now one and six is a seven the seventh house libra energy the scales relationships partnerships unions balance clarity truth and the one can be the first house energy of Aries. Aries, we see in the emperor. That is Aries energy. That's divine masculine, male influence. And um, it's the leader position. It's what you start, um, how you approach things, how you, how you come into things. It says a tidy house, clarity, and organization. Now check this out. 51 is that six. Six house is ruled by Virgo. The six house represents the body, health, wellness daily routines boundaries and organization stars in the sky limitless possibility surrendering so tidy house clarity and organization rebuilding gaining clarity organizing reorganizing and limitless possibility <laughs> that's crazy that's so beautiful remember stars your wishes wishes are already heard of the universe now surrender surrender doubt worry fear okay so pile two these are your messages but always please just take what resonates leave whatever may not resonate use your discernment and thank you so much for being here don't forget to like comment subscribe and share if you are interested in a free personal reading my email is in the description below if you want to donate for my readings um my paypal link is in the description below and feel free to reach out. Okay. And I will see you guys in the next reading or video. Unconditional love and light. So be it. And I'll see you guys in the next reading or video. Thank you again. Bye. All right. Welcome pile number three. You chose the double planted red Jasper. Oh my gosh. Look how perfect this goes with this card. Are you kidding me? Oh, this is so cool. The Knight of Wands. So the Red Jasper goes very well with the root chakra, the roots, your stability, your structure, how you lead, okay, how you ground, all right? And now with the Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands is fire energy, okay? And it is Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, it being a Knight's fire energy anyway. So this is all about action, passion, fire. It is a 12 if you count uh, a Knight. So 12s may be significant. The 12th house is related to moon, subconscious dreams, unknown, unseen things, hidden realms, okay? It's ruled by Pisces, the 12th house. And the 12 can be reduced to a three. The third house in astrology is ruled by Gemini. It represents communication, transportation, journeys, technology, the mentality. So with the Knight of Wands, the Knight of Wands takes action. They get in there, okay, and do things. They take action, action oriented. They're very, very, they come in very quickly to take action. They don't hesitate at all. They may be very passionate, flirtatious, very imaginative, very, very creative. Okay. So this is setting the stage for your reading. So we'll keep that in mind. Let's read this out of the guidebook. This is the dreams of Gaia Tarot. So it's called the Knight of Fire. It's the Knight of Wands. Oh, it's called the Hero of Fire. Sorry. <laughs> okay. It says Guardian, Protector, Savior, Activist, Honorable, Integral, Selfless, and Honest, a person of noble qualities, ordinary people who do extraordinary acts. A person who lies cannot be trusted. Put another's well-being before your own at this time. Accord others with respect and dignity. Avoid gossip and opportunity for redemption. Give a second chance. Altruism? Question mark or e wounded ego? Question mark. Okay, so like I said, we're going to keep that in mind during your reading, and we are going to be doing a different tarot. This is the Unveiling the Golden Age Tarot. We're going to use some other tarot and oracle, okay? So take what resonates. We always ask, divine source light creator and guides of love and light only. So first question, 
What are pile number three's dreams lately, recently, trying to tell them? Remember, this is timeless. Just take what resonates, though. Um, what are pile number three's dreams trying to tell them? Two cards. Ooh, is that one? There's one. Can we get one more? What are pile three's dreams trying to tell them? Okay. Oh my gosh. Wow. So, okay. We have, um, the nine of swords. It's called the nine of activations. So it says angel light card number 58. So the nine of swords, um, nines are usually about reflecting on your past actions, but the swords is the mentality, the beliefs, the thoughts, even words and communication. So the nine of swords is usually of nightmares. It's usually fears, anxieties, worries, doubts, a dark night of the soul, a uh, lunar eclipse coming up. It does cause a lot of dark night of soul stuff. It's just reflection in our work. Okay. That's what it's about. And then we have angel light. Okay, wow. So doing shadow work helps doing the work, right? The shadow work, it it reveals things. And we were getting that in the general messages. It reveals things. That's why it's angel light, okay? It reveals a true path, What, who you wanna be, what you wanna do, right? How do you wanna feel? And then now you have a car number 20, a major arcana judgment. Pile number one got judgment a couple times. So you may feel called to watch pile number one. It's up to you. But card number 20. So 20 can be reduced to a two. The second house in astrology is ruled by Taurus. The second house represents your material earthly world, your 3D reality, your lifetime here now. Okay. And it says collective awakening. <sighs> the judgment is an awakening. You're doing shadow work here. Okay. It is for an awakening. It's for you to ascend. Okay. It's for you to step in your light. It is, it's for you to surrender to divine source, like creator universe. It's for you knowing you have a second chance. You have multiple. Okay. Um, it's making a call. It is receiving a judgment call. It's like the angels coming down and blowing the trumpets. You have angel light and then collective awakening. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, this is so cool. Huge, huge for you, pile number three. Okay. Nine of Swords, Activations, I love it, and Collective Awakening Judgment. Wow. Okay. Next question. <laughs> so, why? Why is this coming through pile three's dreams? Why is this coming through pile number three's dreams? Why is this coming through Pile Three streams, please? Whoa, whoa! Oh, I almost had it. Still don't know what it is. Why? Oh my gosh! Okay, okay. So you have a card number sixty-eight, and it's snow. Okay, we are going into winter soon. At least, depending on your location in the world. Anyway, so um, it's five of pentacles. Five is all about changes and transformations and cycles and transitions and brings challenges. Shadow, dark night soul is challenging, okay? Um, it keeps things stagnant, just like winter, just like the snow falling, okay? Things are stagnant for a while, right? But the five of pentacles is usually like winter time, stagnant, um, patience, um, Figuring out how to warm yourself, feel comfortable, but it's also feeling left out in the cold or keeping yourself out in the cold. Okay. I feel you've been keeping yourself out in the cold. Um, and this is changing. Y you're doing the work there's, and it may be there. Things have been, may have been stagnant for quite some time. And now there's this call. There's this decision. There's the angels coming down, blowing the trumpets. There's this judgment. Okay. Wow. Okay. So I'm going to switch it up. 
let's get another tarot deck. And let's use the Universal Fantasy Tarot. All right, Divine Source Light Creator, Guides of Love and Light Only. So what purpose do these dreams have for our pile number three? What purpose do these dreams have for our pile number three? Okay. One more, please. <laughs> One more, please. What purpose do these dreams have for our pile number three? This is so crazy. All right. The purpose, okay? Um, I need to keep this. Ace of Swords and the Six of Swords. Swords, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, Energy. Remember that Nine of Swords, Nine of Activations, okay? So the Swords... Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, mental clarity, uh, the mind, thoughts, beliefs, words, communication. Aces is always a new beginning. It is always a new beginning. And then six of swords. <sighs> well, if you add this up, you get a seven of swords. Seven of swords is a strategic, careful patience. Okay. And so the ace of swords is cutting out nonsense, cutting out negativity. Like the fear, the doubt, the worry, anxiety, uh, ego mind, right? It is for truth and clarity, standing up for truth, welding that true sword, Archangel Michael sword. This is beautiful. And then the six of swords is moving out of challenges, moving around obstacles, moving away and out of crazy times and waters and moving to a more calmer, solid ground and doing it with help. I feel Archangel Michael's coming in. Remember, angel light, angels coming down, trumpets blowing. Now you have ace of swords, which can be Archangel Michael sword. And six of swords is moving away from challenges, right? With help. So freaking cool. So this is the purpose. All right. Now, um... How can pile number three interpret their dreams more? One more shuffle. How can pile number three interpret their dreams more? Six of pentacles. Another six. Hmm, interesting. So I just want to say the sixth house in astrology it is ruled by Virgo. Um, the sixth house represents the body, health, wellness, daily routines, boundaries, and organization. Six of Pentacles is charity, generosity. It It's giving and receiving. It's a law of attraction. It's a give and take. It's charity, a generous heart. It is receiving spiritual abilities. It's giving without expecting anything in return. It's working with the universe. It's working with guides. Oh my gosh. It is teamwork. So you can ask your protectors, maybe even Archangel Michael, um, your guides of love and light only to help you in that. Simple. Even Divine Source Light Creator Universe. That is amazing. How freaking cool. <laughs> All right, so we are going to move on to an oracle, okay? Oops. So the oracle we're going to use is the Sacred Sites Oracle. Stay. The first one. Okay, Divine Source Light Creator, Guides of Love and Light Only. So what should pile number three be aware of about their dreams that they've been having? What should pile number three be aware of about their dreams that they've been having? Aksum. Okay, there's an Ark of a Covenant. There's a Crescent Moon and the Sun. Interesting. Aksum, where is this again? A lot of locations. Ethiopia. Okay, page 176. So what you should be aware of about your dreams that you've been having, okay? The energy focuses manifestation. Okay, the location is Tigray region, Ethiopia. The lower world is the past. Great mysteries have manifested at Uxum. The card depicts between two brightly burning candles, a treasury containing the true Ark of the Covenant, said to be housed in a chapel in this ancient city. The bright star power symbol on the card has relevance to many. It speaks of the future of the nation. 
Wow. For, uh, of the Star of David and so of King Solomon and of the sacred pentagram, which represents the four basic elements of earth, water, air, and fire, plus the essence of spirit. The Bible warns of the evils of the five-pointed star in the story of the downfall of Venus, renamed Lucifer. Ooh, that's interesting how um, the elements are sticking out, the essence of spirit, um, the star, and the five-pointed star. We did get that five of pentacles. Wow. Why steer us away? That reminds me of the five of pentacles, doesn't it? Okay. Is there too much negativity in your life? Perhaps you are tired of listening to others complain. Instead, look upon all that you do with wonder and awe. See your world through new eyes and bring all that is hidden to the light. Wow. By doing so, joy will accompany you and magic will become a part of your everyday reality. It reminds me of that judgment card. Look at all the eyes. There's eyes on the wings, eyes in the stars. Collective awakening judgment. Holy cow. Now, middle world is the present, okay? Do you take everything at face value? Do you believe that all that do you believe all that you're told? Sometimes truth can only come from firsthand experience. The chapel of the tablet said to house the true Ark of the Covenant is that the church dedicated to St. Mary of Zion, built on the remains of the original church. Why was that Ark left here, so far from the heartlands of Judaism and Christianity? You are being called to investigate all that does not sit easily with you. To walk in wisdom and speak wisely, you must seek knowledge first and experience as much as you can. I want to say, the Five of Pentacles can be church some kind of religious place some kind of religion and it can be stepping out of that just gotta say it okay um to walk in wisdom and speak wisely you must seek knowledge first and experience as much as you can only then can you declare your opinion as truth rather than taking on someone else's. When you are grounded in your own true understanding of the world, you'll be amazed by what will become possible for you. Now, upper world is the potential future. Look deep into the eyes of the mysterious dark beauty of the upper world. She represents the Queen of Sheba and beacons you to make the most of what you have. She took the arduous journey to visit King Solomon in Israel. In those times, even though a queen, she was still just a woman and did not warrant respect. However, using her best aspects, her intellect, her wit, and her charm, as well as her beauty, she managed to gain respect from Solomon himself. He asked the queen to renounce her worship of the sun and instead embrace Yahweh, the Hebrew word for God. After seeking counsel, she accepted, then returned home. Perhaps this episode is what convinced Solomon to later make, make her lands the resting place of the Ark of the Covenant. What are your own good points? You need to recognize and celebrate all your positives, be they kindness or logic, beauty or strength. Once you take full ownership of your own skills and abilities, you'll manifest the world that you deserve. It reminds me of that Six of Pentacles as well. It's a charity. It's a, it's a give and take. It's generosity, generous hearted, um, a law of attraction. Okay. It says creating a sacred arc. Our world is made of energy. So the more power you put into a thought, the more that thought will grow becoming real. Just like the nine of swords can be the fear, the worry, the doubt, negative thoughts, the mental, the beliefs, right? And keep thinking negative, 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 uh, nightmares. It's gonna create the same energy into the physical, into the physical, okay? Um, the purpose of this exercise is to create your own sacred arc and use it as a tool to connect all that is sacred to your path, enhancing your attributes and manifesting your desires. First, list your best attributes attributes on a piece of paper, then decorate a small box, your personal arc, which you will use to contain the energies of all of your good points. Now, find a secret place to store the box. Before you place it there, clear the space first by lighting sage or using a clear spray. Hmm. You may like to light candles as you place your ark there and perhaps to cover the box in velvet cloth. However you wish to sanctify your ark, know that the universe is ready to enhance all that is placed within it, giving it due respect and enabling you to grow fully into who you have come here to be. This is like this awakening for you, yeah? How cool. Okay. So now I do have another question for the tarot and they're just little added questions. We're going to use a celestial tarot. Okay. 
And I have a feeling already, but let's ask Divine Source Light Creator Guides of Love and Light Only. So is are our pile number three having these dreams on a more personal level for their personal life? Ooh, are they having these dreams on a more collective level for the collective? Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Okay, so the personal level, you have Ace of Swords, Archangel Michael Sword again. You have that twice now, which one, one Ace, Ace is the number 11. So <laughs> that's balanced, right? Yin Yang. Shadow light, embracing both sides. Ace of swords is clarity, truth, balance, karma, justice, cutting out negativity, cutting out nonsense. There's a Venus symbol and a Libra symbol here. And then for the collective, you have the chariot, another major arcana. The chariot is cancer energy. It's a number seven. Check this out. The seventh house is ruled by Libra. The scale of clarity, balance, truth, justice. Wow. Karma. Now, it, okay, Cancer is a water sign. Libra is an air sign. So the chariot is mixing two opposing energies very well to move forward, to take, take control, take the reins, take control, move forward, moving at a full speed ahead, um, a warrior spirit with confidence. This is so crazy. So I believe both. I feel like the personal you're doing this personal work, these dreams as a personal, for your personal life to, when you're doing your own personal work, it ripples out generously into the collective. Okay. And the chariot. Get away, fly. <laughs> okay, so now to another oracle. Let's do the Sacred Earth Oracle. So, Divine Source Light Creator, Guides of Love and Light Only, what is more of the significance of Pile Three's dreams? What is more of the significance with Pile Number Three's dreams? renewal <laughs> absolutely renewed okay renewal here we go what is more of the significance with your dreams pile three earthly meaning says giving something a try is not making a lifelong obligation you can switch swap and refine your interests friends lovers career plans home as often as you like if something doesn't fit right try something new and if that doesn't work out try something else what you are looking for could be around the next corner there's no failure in moving on or starting over spiritual meaning listen your heart is calling a thirsty heart cannot be quenched by logic in the mind okay it must drink from the well of life and be replenished each time it breaks it comes to hold more but its essence does not change. Your heart holds your truth in every breath. What does it say? Listen, and you shall be reborn. Like judgment, the judgment. <laughs> wow. Insight. Billowing blankets of snow. You have the five of pentacles, that winter card. Fleecy, eater down clouds. Um unbellish sheets of ice like freshly laundered linen for land sky and sea creamy wisps of white flow and swirl across the heavens and cover earth's extremities extremities <laughs> unbroken white stretches out like a fresh canvas as nature pauses to consider where to make the first brush stroke a winter dawn iced white like a page not yet written a love not yet tasted a day not let yet lived Footprints in the snow, shapes in the clouds, tracks in the ice disappear like they never were. Life makes its mark with no obligation, no expectation, and its masterpiece is lost beneath the next snowfall. White, where time is frozen, like an expectant hiatus lost to a blank page, 
refreshing perpetual renewals here now always awaiting you that's freaking crazy reminds me of the dang it my card holder fell with the uh red jasper okay this is the one with the moon phases on it some crescent moons anyway Wow. Okay. Very interesting. So let's move on to your next Oracle. <laughs> now this one is the sacred light Oracle. Divine source light creator guides of love and light only. What is the most important message that pile three can receive regarding these dreams that they're having? What is the most important message that pile number three can receive regarding these dreams? Oh my gosh, card number 23. 23. This is a year 2023 um, that adds up to number seven. Also, 23 is a five. Five is changes and transformations and some challenges. It says magical alchemy. Um, innovation, ingenuity, curiosity, ahead of your time. Ooh, this is so cool. Okay, magical alchemy. Here we go. Okay. What's the most important message that you can receive regarding your dreams? Ooh, I love this. Innovation, ingenuity, curiosity, and of your time. Alchemy has always been viewed as a magical process. Ancient alchemic practice was usually performed in secrecy from fear of persecution and possible death as a misunderstanding of chemistry in pre-medieval times meant it was often associated with demonic practice and with witchcraft and sacred magic. So I have to say, my uncle um, does... a uh, like these elixirs, alchemy, um, what do you call them? Um, I can't think of the word right now, but the link to his, um, Facebook page, website, and everything is in the description below. It is blueemeraldalchemy.com. Okay. You may want to check it out. All right. The magician Merlin is the ultimate alchemist as he cohesively combined med medicinal power and scientific principles to better the lives of himself and others through alchemic practice. Ingenious and resourceful, the developments created by his humbled curiosity have inspired generations. Ascendant Guide Merlin is here to place you on purpose. While you may feel your ideas are ahead of your time, brainstorming needs to be actioned. Okay. So strong opinions or fascinations with the world of alchemy, witchcraft, and magic encourage you to explore the enchantment of manifestation and creative invention. It's time to make and create to get your hands dirty. Explore creative impulses, design and innovate. Let go of what you think you cannot do. When you place your mind on purpose, magic happens. It reminds me of that Knight of Wands. Take advantage and illustrate your endeavors and future goals while Merlin's energy is at its peak. Mysteries are unsolved problems. Problems are challenges that need to be faced. Ascended Master Merlin. Sacred crystal is Merlinite. The affirmation says, I acknowledge my inner magic. It is guided with loving creation. Now, it ends on page 61. So, starts on page 60. Come on. Ends on page 61. Is it going to focus? Another seven. Okay. I don't even know how many sevens you've gotten. You may want to add them up <laughs> and then look up the angel numbers 777 seven, 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 or 7777. Seven, seven. I don't even know how many sevens you've had. I don't know. Amazing. So. That's the most important message you can receive regarding your dreams that you've been having. You're an alchemist. You can create whatever you want. All right. So let's get your last messages. Um, this is the Shaman's Dream Oracle. They're just simple, straight to the point. Um, 
and we're gonna pull two. So divine source light creator, guides of love and light only. Can we get our last two simple messages, any confirmation, any other synchronicities for our pile number three regarding their dreams that they've been having? One more, please. <laughs> All right, first one, card number 59 and then a card number 28. So a 14, which is a 5, 59, 14, 5. 5 is changes, transformations, challenges. 28 is a 10. 10, 5, 5 is a 10, but 10 is cycles, changes, transformations. Because it's a fulfillment. It is things ending for new beginnings. And it can be reduced to a 1, new beginnings, new cycles. So the 59 says wailing tree reconciliations so that um red jasper with the root shock reminds me of the seeds the roots right now you have this tree wailing tree reconciliations reconcile with yourself right um now 28 hollow bone that reminds me of death rebirth just like a 10 like an eight eighth house is um Death, rebirth, changes, transformation, endings, and new beginnings. It says hollow bone teachability. I love it. It's a moose and it has these feathers on the um, antlers. So here's card number 59. Wailing tree reminds me of that nine of swords type energy with like, you know, that dark nice soul, like a depression and sadness, nightmares, things like that. But there's a reconciliation within yourself. And hollow bone, teachability. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Well, that was your reading, pile number three. So always just take what resonates, leave whatever may not resonate. Use your discernment. And thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And if you are interested in a free personal reading, my email is in the description below. If you are interested in my uncle's a website just to check it out um his website is linked in the description below as well um i believe just a little bit above uh where the cards the cards i used the decks i used in this reading this video anyway um blue emerald um there's also a facebook page and i believe a couple others that are linked there and if you would like to donate i have a paypal link in the description below as well so let me know how this resonates in the comments below if you like or email me and unconditional love and light so be it and I will see you guys in the next reading or video and sending you guys some big 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 hugs and cheers to new beginnings new cycles um leading your own way taking your own leadership position taking action okay all right bye